Hello and welcome to another Facebook Live broadcast with MedStar Health. My name is Michelle Bowman and today I'm joined by Dr. Glenn Wartman, infectious diseases specialist who has been on the front lines of the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, this topic is very important. It's on top of everyone's minds. Um, so we want to talk openly and candidly uh, with one of our infectious disease experts since there's so much information going around um, about the virus and how it's affecting so many lives. Uh, we know our communities have a lot of questions. We're going to try to answer as many as we can uh, in this short broadcast. So if you have any questions, please share them with us below. Dr. Wortman, thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with us. We know you've been very busy, uh, but we appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, before we get started, could you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so I've been here since 2012 as the infectious disease chief here at the hospital center. Before that, I was at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center, actually with Dr. Ardros um, and many other people here. And I was the chief of infectious disease there as well. Well, thank you, for, uh, thank you again for spending time with us today. Um, let's dive right into these questions. Um, so first one, what is COVID-19? So COVID-19 is a coronavirus, and we have coronaviruses here in the U.S. We've had them before. Okay. Um, they cause the common cold. Uh, there are about three or four of them that cause the common cold. We've all had the common mm -hmm. cold before. There are some other coronaviruses that, that are more serious. So there was the SARS virus back right. in 2003. I remember hearing about that. There's the MERS virus, which mm -hmm. is still circulating in the Middle East. And then there's this new virus, the novel coronavirus, which has now been named COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And it causes a respiratory illness. So it causes cough, mm -hmm. um, fevers. Um, it looks like in about 80% of patients, people have a self-limited infection. So, what does that mean? so you have it and it's a bit of a bell curve. So okay. some people don't even know they have it and they just have really? it and they get over it. Um, some people are gonna have very mild symptoms, kind of feel a little bit under the weather and then it mm -hmm. goes on. Other people are gonna have a more uh, rockier course. They're gonna feel like they have mono, pretty sick, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty sore for, for a week or so. Um, and that's about 80% of the group. About 15, 10 to 15 percent of the group will require hospitalization where they'll actually develop pneumonia and will need to come in the hospital for support. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think the most concerning thing, which is the case fatality rate, which in uh, Hunan was running about three percent, two to three percent. Mm -hmm. Looking at data from South Korea, where they've done a quarter of a million tests. And wow. so they've tested broadly. Mm -hmm. So instead of just testing people that came into the hospital, mm -hmm. they've tested broadly. The case fatality rate seems to be much lower. Okay. It's around 0.6%. So it's still, it's still something, mm -hmm. um, but, but not hopefully as high as we were seeing initially out of Wuhan. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Yes. Um, what are the symptoms? What should people be looking out for? So it's fever, um, predominantly fever, okay. um, the development of a cough, some people feel a little bit short-winded, mm -hmm. so they'll have a little bit difficulty getting their breath. Um, if the symptoms are mild, um, or if you don't have shortness of breath, you can actually just ride through it at home. Okay. Um, if the symptoms are more severe, you're having trouble breathing or feeling really sick, that's when you're gonna need to come to the hospital for care. When we hear warning signs about underlying medical issues, um, what does that mean? Um, yeah, what does that mean? Sure. So it's a virus, and just like we see with influenza or other viruses, people that have impaired immune systems, um, chemotherapy, uh, other things, mm -hmm. are going to have a harder time with this virus. And then also the elderly. As we get older, our immune system starts, starts to weaken. And just like with influenza, people that get influenza who are over the age of 70 or 80 at a much higher risk of developing pneumonia or death. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing we're seeing with this virus. Most of the bad complications, unfortunately, are concentrated in that older population. Okay. Um, other than the elderly, are there any other groups um, who could be especially susceptible to this disease? I'm thinking people with chronic conditions, COPD, congestive heart failure, audio, autoimmune disorders, um, if you're pregnant. Sure. Um, so we don't know specifically, like okay. very, very defined risk, risk groups other than being old. Okay. But 
just from the get-go, if you have some other medical problems and you add a viral infection on top of it, it's going to be tougher for you. Um, fortunately, with this virus so far, children seem to do very well. Um, That's interesting. Yes, yeah. yes. So the elderly get can get very sick from it, but kids seem to do very well. Um, now, we mentioned earlier that if you have minimal symptoms, there's a possibility you could pro probably wait it out at home, do some so social dis distancing, self-quarantining. Um, what else should you do if you have any of those symptoms? So mild symptoms, the, the big thing to remember is try not to pass it to other people, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. in the past, we've always said that with flu or colds, mm -hmm. right? Don't pass it to other people, but people come to work, they power through. Right. Um, this, we, need, we don't want to do you that with do this that. one. Mm -hmm. um, this one, if you're sick, you really need to be staying home okay. um, and avoiding giving it to other people. Um, with that said, um, how does COVID-19 spread? So right now, again, this is a novel virus. It's been out for about eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So we're still learning, still learning a lot about it. But it, it, the main mm -hmm. way it's transmitted is through droplet spread. So I cough into the air, it's, it's in the air, mm -hmm. and then someone else walks by. That's usually within about a six foot radius. Wow, um, so it's not over there in the back of the room, it's within mm -hmm. a six foot radius that I can spread it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's the main way it's transmitted. Okay. Um, can COVID-19 survive on surfaces like this table or doorknobs? Yes. So we just, there was just an article reported where they actually looked at that. They took the virus and they put it on various um, uh, cardboard and different different mm -hmm. things to see how long it persisted. And it can persist for several days on countertops and metal and things like that. What we don't know is that's a lab experiment where they take a concentration of the virus in a very controlled environment, put it on a piece of metal, mm -hmm. and then see if they can get it off the metal. We don't know what that means in real life. Um, when it's cold, when it's hot, um, just because it's on the table doesn't mean you're going to pick it up yourself. Mm -hmm. So that, that we don't know. But I think it, it just feeds into the message, wash your hands. Um, That's a good tip. If you're Everyone in a house, <laughs> wash your hands because you're touching things, you want to wash your hands. And then at home, you want to be cleaning your environment. Mm -hmm. um, certainly in the healthcare industry, you want to be making sure things are clean. Yes, yes. That's very important. Um, what can you do um, besides, you mentioned disinfecting surfaces, making sure every, everything is clean. Um, what can you do to protect yourself and others? And has there uh, been any success using existing antivirals to treat coronavirus? So we don't have a treatment right now. There's no specific treatment and there's no specific preventive measures. There's no vaccine. Um, there's no medicine that we know that, that works. So we're really back in the 1950s and 40s when people used to deal with measles outbreaks, um, polio outbreaks, smallpox outbreaks. The lessons that were learned then are the same lessons we're applying now. We're, we're dusting off the playbook right, right. and we're doing the same thing they did back then. And you know, I'd like to emphasize that other countries have gone through this before us. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what's happening in Korea and China, the curve is starting to flatten. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, so there's an initial there, yeah. increase in cases and then it, and then it flattens out. Mm -hmm. And I think in the US, you know, we're kind of on the beginning part of the curve, yeah. but if we do what they did, mm -hmm. um, social distancing, separate ourselves, we should experience that same decrease. Okay. Um, if someone has uh, COVID-19 or if you suspect that you have COVID-19, maybe you're uh, displaying some of those symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, what could happen to them and what should you do? Sure, so if you have symptoms, the best thing to do is to reach out to your primary care doc. Um, there's also e-visit, MedStar e-visit, which you can go to and talk to somebody um, virtually and get some advice about what the next step would be. If you have mild symptoms, you may not need to be tested. Um, eventually, this may turn out to be just like the flu. Okay. And if you have, you know, you tell somebody over the phone what your symptoms are and it's mild, they may just tell you, sounds like COVID, you're going to just stay home for a little bit. Okay. We're not quite there yet, but mm -hmm. I think that's how this is going to play out over the next few weeks. Um, are there any important lessons learned from other countries who have been through this before it came to the U.S.? Yeah. I think separation, um, you know, we're a social people, everybody's mm -hmm. socially like right. to get together. Um, and this lesson about separating ourselves from other people is just really important.
So uh, let's dive into some of our viewer questions. Mm -hmm. um, Dolly asks, how long uh, do we expect for this to carry on? Is there a risk for it um, to go on for the next 12 weeks or maybe even more months or so? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, the honest answer is we don't know. It's difficult to believe it's going to go away like that. Um, there, there's, you know, will it get better when the weather warms up? Nobody knows. I would be prepared for this to go on for a while. Um, most likely it's six months to a year. You know, whether we'll be doing this with everything mm -hmm. shut down, I don't think so. Okay. But probably what will happen, it will come through. You're probably immune to it after you get it once. So more and more of the population will be immune to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it'll start slowing down. Okay. Um, Angela asks uh, sh that she read that ibuprofen can actually make the illness worse. Is this true or false? We don't know yet. So I did see something on the news this morning that the health department in France had put that out, that mm -hmm. um, in, if you're French, you shouldn't take NSAIDs. I haven't seen formal guidance from the CDC on that yet. Mm -hmm. um, it may follow, I just don't know yet. Um, a viewer named Ty says, um, my son and I both have acute asthma, exacerbation, bronchitis. Uh, they're isolated at home using televisit and limiting uh, pediatrician visits. Um, at what point should they reach out for a direct medical treatment or get tested? They've seen testimonials where people have waited too late, their mm -hmm. lungs have um, already um, gone into fibrosis when they got to the hospital. So what, what should they do? So first, you're doing the right thing. Um, you, have a, you have a higher risk condition, you're isolating yourself, that's the right thing to do. Um, if you start developing fevers or difficulty breathing, you notice a change in your breathing pattern, that's when you need to reach out to your doctor and find out what the next step would be. Okay. Uh, KM asks, should parents with infants that have not been fully vaccinated, so they're probably less than a year or so old, um, should they be concerned about ex being exposed to the virus? Same thing with having a toddler with asthma uh, or breathing issues. Should they be spe uh, especially concerned right now? Um, not especially concerned. As I mentioned, children seem to do okay with this, but I would reach out to your pediatrician because you don't want your child not to get vaccinated mm -hmm. either. So it's, it's a balance. Okay. So reach out to your pediatrician and find out what their plans are to make sure your child gets the needed vaccinations. Thank you. Um, where at, Shelly asks, uh, where at MedStar can you be tested? So MedStar Prompt Cares are offering testing. So that if you're near a prompt care, that's, that's a place to go to get testing. Uh, we have a question from Lisa. What level of fever do people present with? It, it varies. It varies. And if you're at home taking your temperature, um, if it's above certainly 101, that's something to be concerned about. We usually say 100.4 is considered a fever. Um, if you take it once, the 100.4, I'd probably wait a little bit and then take it again. Okay. If you're consistently above that, that would be a fever. Tina says, uh, if you get the virus, what are your chances of a full recovery? Great, great. As I mentioned, um, the case fatality rate out of um, South Korea is very good, very encouraging. And so for the vast majority of people, 80% or more, they're going to have a very mild condition. Okay. Even the people that come in the hospital, mm -hmm. um, the data out of China shows most people recover and, and do okay. Except if you're in one of those high-risk elderly groups, it's going to be tougher. Okay. Sheriff says, what is really the first symptom? Is it a headache or a sore throat? Is there a certain order to these things? No, and that's the problem with, with every infectious disease is oftentimes they don't follow the rule book. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's a little bit different. Right. Um, right. And so it's, I can't say if this develops first, it's this or that. Um, it's, a, it's usually a combination of things. So it's going to be fever, body aches, um, getting worse over a day. That's when to be concerned. Uh, we have a question from Tina. She asks, is it best not to have visitors in your home while the virus is spreading? Yeah, that, that's a tough question. So the guidance is social distancing. And, you know, I, at, at this point, if, if, it's, um, if it's optional, I would probably try and stay away from people. Um, that being said, you can't, you know, completely that's isolate yourself. Right. That can be difficult to do. Yeah. Dr. Fauci, I, I, I follow Dr. Fauci regularly. Mm -hmm. His advice is to, is to hunker down. And so just, I would hunker down as best you can and let's see where this goes. Um, Cause right now we're, we're actually not sure what it's gonna be like tomorrow or the day after. 
Um, we have a question from Shamim. How long do the symptoms normally last? It depends how bad it is for you. So, um, but on average, it's probably going to be at least a week um, of feeling kind of kind of rough, kind of bad, mm -hmm. just like the flu. Okay. You know, you're home uh, for a week or so. Uh, I believe that wraps it up for us today. Uh, thank you so much, yeah, um, you. Dr. Uh, Wartman, for spending time with us and sharing um, your expertise on this very important topic. Um, if you have any questions or would like to find out more, um, please visit medstarhealth.org slash coronavirus. Thank you.